Welcome to video 22A. We are grinding our way through and now you really should be seeing a light at the end of this tunnel, not only for this module, but for the course. Okay, so we're gonna talk about S corporations and we're gonna start with the election to become an S corporation. So an S corporation is formed just like any corporation is, right? So we generally distinguish between a corporation that has made an S election and one that has not as an S corporation and a C corporation. But a C corporation, that comes from subchapter C. That's really just any corporation other than an S corporation. So an S corporation is a corporation that makes this unique tax election under subchapter S, thus the name of the Internal Revenue Code. So legally, it's the same as any other corporation, but it operates as a flow through for tax. So uniquely, uh, from a legal perspective, there's no difference, right? It's structured as any other corporation in the state of whatever. Uh, you just make a federal election to treat it as a flow through under the S subchapter of the Internal Revenue Code. So who can qualify for uh, an S corp election? Well, obviously you gotta be a corporation. Uh, well, that isn't true. You can be an LLC, be elected to be taxed as a corporation and then make an S election. In any event, uh, the qualification requirements are, as you would call back to chapter 15, not quite as flexible as they are with the others. So you can only be, to be a, an S corporation, the S corporation can only have shareholders that are U.S. citizens and residents, so no foreign shareholders. It can't have corporations or partnerships be owners, shareholders, and it can't have more than 100 owners which generally speaking is gonna restrict any public company from being an S corporation. So uh, the limits on the corporation type are, it must be a domestic, so a US corporation must be incorporated within the confines of the United States. And it can't be what they call an ineligible corp. And there are a series of these funky types of corporations, which you don't need to know, that are not eligible for S corporation status. And then lastly, that corporation can only have one class of stock outstanding. So it can't have common and preferred, it can only have common. So S corporations file their tax, or sorry, S corporations file this election by the original due date of their tax return, which is the 15th day of the third month. If you do it before that date, you can apply S corporation status for the whole year. If you do it after that date, it becomes effective the following year. So uh, again, we've got a repeat of the last slide and I'm not sure why. So, uh, S corporation election can be terminated. That can be done voluntarily. Uh, that can, is by elected by shareholders with greater than 50% of the stock. And the effective date basically works the same as the election date. If you do it by the original filing date, you get it for that whole year. Otherwise you have to wait a year and the uh, termination of the S election becomes effective the year following. There are also involuntary terminations. And generally speaking, that's if you fail the S Corp requirements. So for example, uh, should a foreign shareholder become um, one of the shareholders, then you fail. Should you get to 101 shareholders, you're no longer eligible, that's an involuntary termination. And then uh, in order to avoid uh, tax avoidance schemes, uh, you can't have more than passive, you can't have more than 25% of your gross receipts come from passive income. And that's basically trying to structure a uh, investment corporation inside of an S Corp and it's just not permitted. That brings us to the end of video 22A.